All right, let's take a look at this price action. So what we established this morning is this. Okay, let's go back over today's action and let's, let's see what we got. We established we have three setups in the room. We have the outer edge setup and we have the zone break setup. Those two setups are always with trend. So you have the outer zone, outer slingshot, and then we have the zone break. So what I said on the microphone this morning before PPI came out is I said the price action was showing this. We were right here this morning on the microphone. We're talking, looking for an outer zone trade. That's our first setup that we have in the trading, trading room. We only have three setups we look for on any given market on any given day. All futures, stocks, Forex, currency, and crypto markets. Same exact setup. We're looking for at least one candle close below my outer zone. Remember, my outer zones were tested for 30 years using an artificial intelligence program. So we know that these zones, statistically speaking, on the S&P are the best zones, statistically speaking. We should see a rebound from this zone. We come down to the zone. We get one candle close outside the zone. As soon as it closes back inside the zone, your computer or your Ninja Trader will form a yellow trigger or entry bar, and there's an alarm system that will go off. There's your alarm that went off this morning on an outer edge trade. All right, so you can use this through a strategy also. If you use this, we have, you have a strategy built into it where the strategy is the same way. It will allow uh, you to look and get outer edge trades based upon a strategy instead of an indicator. which that was this right here. We have an indicator and strategy that comes with the system. So the strategy, this is the 112 Rinko. It got a close outside, close back in. I had these on the members download page inside the PDF, the settings to look for a 112.12 12 or a 120.20 on how you can utilize a strategy or use it as an indicator. The indicator will fire a yellow trigger bar, entry bar, with an alarm that beeps when this qualified setup comes up this morning. Then the market starts ticking along. We talked about two setups we're looking for. So on the microphone this morning, I was talking with you members in this area. I said there's only two possible setups we can look for now. We can look for another outer edge trade. We got to close below, at least a candle below, and then close back inside to form another yellow bar. Did not happen. I said if we get a trend change and the trend dots go from green to red, which they did, if that happens, there's no longer an outer edge that's available to us. We're going to look for our other possible setups. Our other possible setups would be a zone break or another outer edge setup with trend. So the outer edge setup is looking for trades, buys on this outer edge, this outer zone or this outer zone up here, this outer edge zone up here. So I put this in the room, and I said the only two setups we have left right now is an outer edge cell here when we close outside this outer edge and then close back inside of it. I wrote that in the room, and then I wrote this in the room. I said the only other trade, as soon as this green bar, as soon as it was red bars at the time, I said as soon as we start printing green bars, these zone breaks are gonna start printing, these horizontal dots, Right after I talked about that, we started getting green bars. And I typed this in the room. I said, this is our zone break level. So then we were set up for a big break. We had two setups we're looking for. We're looking for an outer edge for price to continue up, get it close outside of my outer zone, then close back inside. A yellow bar would have formed, and your beep would have happened on your speakers for a possible entry, outer edge slingshot. Or if the market's too weak, it started retracing. If we close two candles below my zone break, a yellow bar would form. This is the strategy that we have. The yellow bar formed in the room, live in the room, on this zone break. And you had a big break from 52, 33 and a quarter all the way down to 02. So the reason being we had a big gap fill 
We're looking for a big run. I'm going to show you how we use market profile that's worked for 39 years. How we found that this is a big possible runner right here. We had a big possible runner. How do you find targets? There's two ways to find targets after you enter these trades. One, you can use our symmetry dots that we have available. It's a lifetime um, programming fee that you have on your symmetry dots to scale on the way down. Or we can use a chart trader. You can use chart trader, trader that Ninja has with an ATM to automatically trail. You can strategy trade this. Right? So it's totally up to you guys how you want to do it as far as getting in the entry and managing your trade. But we knew there's a big gap, a hole in the market right here. We knew there's a big, giant hole in the market. So we had a target of all the way down to this level right here. We had a big target down here. How do we do it? We use market profile. I'll show you how to do it in a second. So here at the time, here's our next zone break level. Here's our next outer edge. Well, the outer edge has started closing a couple candle closes outside of our outer edge. But see how it never closed back inside of the outer edge. That's why no yellow candle was formed. There's a trend change. Now the trend change, we have red to green. So now I know my two setups I'm looking for now. Now here's my new zone break. My dots are forming. And here is now my outer edge. So now I got my other two trend setups. These are two both trend setups. I've taken all my past setups, my Momo trades, all my trades and put them into three setups. So now I see the next setup is my zone break and here's my outer edge right here and here's my zone break entry. So from this morning, before it happened, these are leading indicators, they're not lagging. We talked about this setup before it happened. We talked about this zone break, and we had a huge heads up. I started talking about it at 9.34 in the morning. It did not break until 9.46. So you had 14 minute heads up. That's how much a leading indicator this is. We had 14 minute heads up on this zone breakdown. All right, now how do we see if there's going to be such a big run in the market? We can use market profile. So what I did at 8.30 this morning, I put up these big gaps in the market. Now market profile moved again on us here. It was up here at this level. What I found, this low value area was sitting up here at uh, 0, 02 and 3 quarters. The market was balanced. It was in between my profile. And then I had an imbalance from here all the way down to this level where the market has no underlying demand so what you can do is you can mark up going two days back on our two to four hour profiles we don't use 30 minute market profiles that's typically for traders that are new to market profile they don't work as well 30 minute market profile to me does not find true accumulation distribution I like using the two to four hour window so I looked it at a two to four hour market profile and I marked these up for traders in the room. I said 0, 02 and 3 quarters would be the big gap all the way down to 0, 08 and a half. So as we broke 0, 02 and 3 quarters, we had a big gap in the market and we had our target all the way down to this 0, 03 and 3 quarters. The next gap today I have going down to what 92 and 3 quarters. Why? I go two days back and look at my market profiles. I can do this before the market. I even start trading in the morning. I found a big gap in the market right here that I need to fill. Why? With market profile, if you see in the past the market goes vertical, big vertical movements, and you see big wide market profiles like this, wide market profiles, a lot of space in between them. It creates gaps in the market for future runs in the market. So I, I projected those going forward. You can see my gap broke that way you anticipated. It came down and filled that gap. So what you're going to do, you can use market profile to find out where targets are. And for runs like this, this is a big run. 33 and 3 quarters, potential all the way down to 03. 30 S&P point run. Now, what you can do, I was telling traders, if you play my first video, is you can 
look at the market. Uh, the oscillator down t here tells you when the market's really weak. If I get below 100 and my oscillator breaks down and I give a little inverse cup and handle and then I start flatlining. I'm flatlining here. So from this level, this is a 20 Simrinko. From this level all the way to this level, this market was pegged at a ne below negative 100. So from 10 o'clock, from 9.46 to 10 o'clock, that 14-minute window, you can trade smaller Renko sizes. So if you miss this first breakdown, let's take half this Renko size. I like going as low as a 7 on the S&P. We can even go down to 7. I wouldn't go lower than a 177. But if you start seeing this market has a big gap in market profile and you want to get on smaller Renko sizes, if this market is pegged, if it is pegged at negative 100 or positive 100, then what we can do is we can find additional entries in the market. Now what we can find is here was our original break. So now you can find with a smaller Renko size of 177, so your stops are extremely small, that break was 18 and a half and it got as low as what? 03. It went down 15 S&P points with a 10 tick stop. This is 7 Renko size, so you want to put your stop about 3 ticks outside of your Renko size. So 10 tick stop with an 18 point plunge. So you can use smaller Renko sizes like this if your larger Renko size is a pegged above or below 100. The easy way to see it pegged, because see you can't use this oscillator on the small Renko size. Oscillator is going to be, you can't tell if it's weaker or stronger, right? But you can use my 12020 to tell if the market has strength or not, or weakness. So now we can check down into a smaller Renko size if you wanted to do that also by not trading larger Renkos. So if you, you can tell, we've been pegged all the way down from here. And it looks just like this. You'll break through the negative 100, you'll give like a little mini inverse cup and handle and they'll start flatlining from here all the way to here. Just like it gained strength, it gave a cup and handle, start flatlining from there to there and from here, let's see if we had a 7, I don't know if we had a 7 to pop us in on this move back up if you wanted it, from 04 to 15, that's about a 10 minute window that you may even had one that popped up there for an upside break. My point is, you only look for three setups. You look for the outer edge trade, which is a leading indicator. My zone breakdown, we talked about it 14 minutes before it broke down. It's a very leading indicator. See, here's a failure trade right there. There's a failure trade that fired in. So you did have a trade on the way up on a smaller Renko size, 13 a quarter, as high as 23. 10 point S&P point run off of a 177 Renko size. Why? Because the market is stronger. Let's take a look at it. Let's look at 10802. Is the market strong pushing up on my larger Renko size? 10802. It's got to be pegged if you're using smaller Renko sizes. Is it pegged at 10802? 10802 is right there. Yes, it is. So see, it gave you a buy signal right there for a 10-point move on the S&P on the upside also. Why? Look at the market's pegged. It got above 100, mini cup and handle, flatlined. There's your entry right there for the next break. Now, for the next setup on my 12020 is what? We're not trending, right? It's doing a mini cup and handle right here. So we're not trending yet. It's got a flat line. So I'm looking for a zone break. It can zone break here, a zone break, or I'm looking for an outer edge trade. Don't make it any more difficult than that, guys. If you're going to trade off a smaller Renko size, let the larger Renko size be trending. Let it be pegged. And it looks just like this. You break below negative 100, you get a little cup and handle, inverse cup and handle, flat line. This is where you want to trade smaller Renko sizes. Mini cup and handle, flat line. This is where you want to trade breakouts 
right through here. All right. That's using a macro size into micro size. Now, if I close two candles, if I close another candle, it's going to turn yellow bar on your speakers. Yellow candle is going to form here in a second if I get a close. And we're going to have another zone breakout to the upside. All right. If this thing closes above it. If it doesn't close above it and I get a close below here, and I close back inside of it, I'll have an outer edge trade. But there's only a couple setups. What I did over these years and years and years of years is I found the three setups that work over and over and over and over on a daily basis. There's a way to qualify them though, right? We want to qualify them. If we're going to use these as an indicator, we need to know when the market's strong and when the market's weak. What I found is, is that when the market gets a deep retracement, these outer edges are the best on deep retracements. The zone breakouts are the best when the market is into a stronger position. Okay, you see the yellow bar just formed after I talked about it because it closes two closes outside of the outer edge. All right, but th these are very leading. Heads up on the outer edge, called it. Big heads up, 14-minute heads up. We're talking about it on a zone break because the big gap in the market. Another big move, 30-point move to the downside. Beautiful setup. Now, so the next setup, I drew this up, outer edge or zone break. You had a big heads up right here at 1020. Then it broke out at 1030. You had an 11-minute heads up on this one for the zone break. These are leading, guys. These are not lagging indicators. These are very leading indicators. You just got to position it like that. You have to look for an outer edge, and you have to look for the zone break. Okay, the failure trade only happens if the market is going against zone trend and the oscillator has to get weak, then strong, and then back weak, which I showed you how to do that on the last video.